Ah yes, ready to start building with my brand new base plate. Let's just go ahead and test it out really quick. All right, everything looks Buy good. My product, lol. Wait a minute, what is this? Buy my product, Wait, lol. what the heck? Buy my product, lol. No, stop. Buy my product, stop. lol. Hey guys, this is Rai Guy Gaming here today, back with another episode of Roblox Tutorials. This one won't really be a scripting tutorial, as there isn't any scripting today, but hopefully I'll still be able to show you some stuff nonetheless. So I still get a lot of views and comments on my easily remove viruses video. It's probably one of my more watched videos, not my most watched, but it's up there. I was going to start another series today, but I decided to make this part two because I am still getting those comments and I wanted to help people out that were still having issues uh, because obviously the method provided in the last video won't help you get rid of everything. And I've learned a couple things since I've started looking more into Roblox viruses. Please be sure to watch the entire video as I will go over multiple methods on how you can get rid of and identify viruses. So the one I showed in my game, I just coded myself. So there's nothing to show there, but I actually did manage to obtain a car that does have some viruses. And then I'll show you other places you can look. So the first and probably easiest thing you can do to get rid of viruses actually has nothing to do with scripting and really nothing to do with any of the models or scripts in your game. But one place you can always check for malicious activity going on is in your plugins. So if you come up here to the top, you follow my mouse and click plugins on the ribbon, and then come over here and click manage plugins, you'll be able to see a list. I don't want that there. <laughs> you'll be able to see a list of all the plugins you have installed. So you can see I only have one right now, uh, just this character importer. And you can add plugins here, you can disable them temporarily, or you can just uninstall them outright. So if you see any fishy looking plugins, you can remove them. If you're not sure, what you can do is disable them all run your place and see if you still get a virus, then you obviously know it isn't a plugin and it's probably something in your place like a model or a script. But if you disable them all and you do not, no longer have the virus pop-ups or whatever, then you can go ahead and start re-enabling them one at a time. And once you turn on the one that has the virus, you'll be able to find out. Now, some viruses are kind of clever and that they won't trigger in studio and you'll actually have to publish your place and then play test it live to be able to figure out if there's a virus or not but yeah then once you find it if it is a plugin you can just click here and click uninstall i'm not going to uninstall this because i like this plugin so now i'm going to go over something that i should have did in the last video but i didn't really think about because i'm dumb so instead of having to run a command line script if you're looking for suspicious scripts and something like this car here i know this car has viruses one thing you can do is you can come up here to the explorer search bar and just type in script so as you can see here, now I have a view of every single script that's in my place, everywhere. And so basically, I just want to find the model, so here's my car model, and then just go through it and look for anything suspicious. So I might have to go into some of these, check them out, and see what they look like. And so, for example, this one is one that you can already tell is a virus. Unfortunately, they weren't as stupid when naming this one, because if you see down here, there's some called Fix, and these ones are also viruses, but they're a little bit more obviously named. As a general rule of thumb, virus creators are pretty stupid, and they'll actually hide their viruses in the most obvious places. So if you see any scripts named something like fix or patch or do not delete or something along those lines, that's usually the virus you're looking for. Um, usually they'll be extra dumb with what they think they'll clever by doing something like this and adding a ton of blank lines in the script 
so that you aren't actually able to locate the code that's being executed. And if you can't find anything just by searching around, just hit Control F on your keyboard. That will bring up this little find window up here. Type in E because it's usually the most common letter in the English language. So you'll usually get a result when you type in E. And here you can see we have some code here. Oh crap, it just lost it. Here it is. And here's another tell for viruses. If you see like math formulas or something that looks kind of like this, it's usually pretty obvious that this is a virus here because obviously people that are just writing scripts won't have like math formulas or anything. Why does it keep coming back over here? Or anything like that inside of their legitimate scripts. And by that I mean don't delete every single script you find that has math in it. Obviously programming has a lot of math. I just mean if you find something like this where you have a function like get fn or require that has a math equation inside of the parameters, those are the ones that you want to be wary of. Anyways, basically, I'm not smart enough to tell you what get f uh, I think it stands for get function environment. I'm not smart enough to tell you what it does because I'm not sure I entirely understand it, but basically just know that this is usually something you'll see in virus scripts is this function here. So we will want to delete this one. As an exception to the rule I gave earlier about naming conventions for viruses, this one is a little less obviously named. You can see its name welding. But as soon as you open it, you can see a message about not deleting it because it's critical to Roblox Studio. If you ever see that, delete the script right away because that's not the case. And if we scroll down more, of course, we see the basically the same kind of line that we saw before. I haven't been able to find one, but I know they're in here. Sometimes instead of get fenv, they'll use require, which also is a good way to inject code into someone else's game. So if you see a require function that has like a big function, a uh, math function like this passed into it, that's also the sign of a virus because kids, you know, are being dumb and trying to hide their stuff. I almost wonder if they do it on purpose so that it's easy to find and delete because it's just kind of silly how much trouble they go through to make it as obvious as possible. So yes, unfortunately that does require just a little bit of knowledge of scripting to be able to sift through your scripts and find out what is legitimate and what isn't. But like I said, usually they make it super obvious, so it shouldn't be too hard to figure out what doesn't belong and what does, especially if you have any experience with scripting at all. And the last thing I wanted to point out, sometimes you might get objects like this. I think usually they contain a script and you might find them all inside of your model that you've imported. And it seems like it might be impossible to find them all and get rid of them all. Back in the day, common examples, there was one called like, dang, you got owned. There's some that just have random Unicode characters that you can't really display properly. So yeah, basically, if you find something like that that's basically just spam throughout your model and you want to get rid of it, all you have to do is click on it, come down here to the class name, and see what it is. So you can see this one's class name is a weld. So now if I come up here to the search bar, type in weld, I'll be able to see every weld that's in my workspace environment. And so now I can look for maybe those specific objects that are holding malicious scripts. So all in all, unfortunately, there isn't a super easy way to get rid of all virus scripts and get rid of all virus objects. There are some ways you can go against it, like we covered in this video, like removing plugins, searching through scripts, um, and stuff like that. But of course, the best way to avoid viruses is to only get models and install plugins from sources and people you trust. But of course, the number one best way to be safe from stuff like this is just to make your own stuff. And I know that's not always feasible, but that is obviously the best way. But anyways, guys, uh, thank you for watching. I hope someone found this helpful and you're able to narrow down what's causing you 
that headache in your game. And I hope you all have a good rest of your day, and I hope you have a great time with your Roblox builds. Anyways, I'll see y'all in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>